Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k the Necron channel. Now in today's video I'm going to be talking about 7 units that I predict are going to be worse than they were in 9th edition. So they're going to be, when we're talking about 10th edition they're going to be slightly worse than they were in 9th and it's just my prediction, just my opinion. I may get these wrong and if you've got different opinions put them down in the comments below. Now in the previous video we did 10 units that I believe are going to be better for 10th edition. So if you've missed that, check that one out in the playlist or somewhere on the channel. I'm sure you'll be able to find it. But today we're talking about seven units that I think are going to be worse. Now, I've only got seven. And to be honest with you, it's probably less than seven. Quite a, a large amount of them are, in fact, very similar. So it's probably less, but it was the best I could do. I think most of our units are going to be okay. So the first one is going to be a shocker, it's the Canoptic Scarabs. Now the Canoptic Scarabs were our absolute OP unit from the entirety of 9th edition in fact. Cheap as chips, 15 points a model, give them objective secure, they had fly, they were quick, jump onto an objective, they can advance on top of that because they didn't really need to do any attacks. Still an, an objective so your opponent isn't scoring victory points in their turn. And if they're alive in your turn, you are scoring victory points in your command phase. They were fantastic, 15 points a base. Now there's a couple of reasons why I've got a concern for the Canoptic Scarabs. The first one is more of a minor reason, but I'll get onto the major one in a moment. The first one is the, the way they interact with terrain, in particular the, the, the swarms, is a much different interaction. So it previously in 9th edition was infantry beasts and swarms interacted with terrain features. Now with ruins for example, it's just infantry and beasts. They also did interact with the, they do interact with the fly keywords, so our Canoptic Scabs are okay in that sense. They can get onto second tier levels of ruins and stuff like that. But for non-fly non -fly swarms, in fact, in the game, they have taken a nerf. But that's not the main reason. The main reason is they've released the data sheet for the Tyranid Rippers. Now the Tyranid Rippers are also a swarm unit. Very similar to Scarabs, I've always thought of them as sort of a similar unit, not as quick as our Scarabs, and of course they don't have fly either, but they're a swarm. And on the data sheet, they don't have objective secure, or no, not objective secure, we're not in night edition anymore. They have objective control, zero. They have nothing in terms of objective control, and I feel like Games Workshop are going to go down this avenue with swarm units, give them no objective control, and use them for what they probably should be used with anyway, which is being a screen unit and just being a nuisance rather than actually scoring. Now, they may still interact with different secondaries, like we had ancient machineries before, right? So they may still interact with things like that, but I'm predicting that they're gonna get objective secured zero and they're gonna be less useful than they were in night edition. So that's my first one. I'm really hoping that isn't the case. Um, but yeah, that's my first one of this video. The second one is the Catan Shard of the Nightbringer, one of my favourite models, as you guys know. Now, I don't know what they're going to do, because first of all, the Wounds Cap is very, very likely going to be gone, because you've seen it from other units, data sheets that, we've, that used to have a Wounds Cap, they've no longer got that Wounds Cap. So, yeah, pretty much the Catan Shards have lost that Wounds Cap. Now, second of all, monsters and vehicles can now be targeted even though they're in engagement range. So if the Nightbringer does not finish off a unit, then he's not protected. He's still got to deal with that unit in your opponent's fight phase at the very least. But your opponent can still fire at your Catan Shard. I mean, of course, in Ninth Edition, you could just get your... Your opponent will just fall back with that particular unit, and then they're going to fire at him anyway. But they are less protected in that sense. Because sometimes they just didn't have the capability of falling back or they just didn't want to fall back and yeah they can still be targeted now without actually falling back so they're going to get all the attacks from the fight phase as well as all the shooting attacks in their shooting phase now we've yet to see the katan powers i'm quite shocked that they didn't that they didn't show that in the faction focus for necrons because it's quite a major thing for us with the katan powers so maybe they'll come clutch with that and maybe they'll be quite good but the Nightbringer is one of the other ones that I think is going to go slightly downhill. Maybe the points cost can redeem him, but I'm not sure. Third on the list today is the Ghost Ark. I know I've just said the Ghost Ark, probably one of my favourite units. I know I say that often, but I like the Katan... No, what do I like? I like the Nightbringer, I like the Command Barge, and I like the Ghost Ark. They're my three sort of top tier level favourites. But the Ghost Ark, I think, is going to see... A bit of a nerf, but I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, 
I was umming and ahhing about putting this in the video because we're likely going to get the, what's it called, firing deck ability. But we're already putting Necron Warriors in there by the looks of things. So that's, you know, that's still good. But again, they can be fired at even though they're in engagement range because they're a vehicle. Second of all, we've lost objective secured now, and that was the way I used to play them, play them personally. Other people play them differently, but I used them as a battering ram with objective secured, tire units up that are on an objective. If they're going to fight back, it's going to be quite difficult because of quantum shielding, 14 wounds and all that jazz. But we've not got objective secured anymore, so we're not stealing on an objective. We will have objective control, it could be, I don't know, 8, it could be 6, I don't really know, we don't know yet. But I think they are going to be less desirable for 10th edition because of that lack of objective secured. Now there is the tank shock ability which will, you know, that will come clutch as well I think. But we're probably going to be using that on the command barge and things like that. So I'm a little bit on the fence with that one and I've thrown that in this list here because for me it was like a top top tier unit. It was a, an S tier kind of unit. And even if it's still an A tier unit, that is still good. And maybe it's even better for you guys in 10th edition because of the way you use a Ghost Ark. But for me, I used it in a different way. So that's why it gets in this video. The next one, a little bit of a cop out because I've already said a Catan Shard. You're going to see this as a bit of a theme in this video, but it's the Deceiver. Now, the Deceiver, similar reasons for the Nightbringer, is a monster, can be fired into combat with. Now, the Deceiver in 9th edition also had the Deep Strike ability, dimensional. What was it called now? Dimensional Translocation, that was it. Now, in the Games Workshop website, they've now got the, in their shop, where you can filter, you know, you click Necrons and then you click, previously you used to click Heavy Support or Elite or Fast Attack. They've changed it to the actual keywords that these guys have got now. I don't know if you've seen the video we did recently, where Praetorians now have Deep Strike. So you can click on Deep Strike and it will show you the units that have Deep Strike now. So Praetorians as an example. You would expect the Catan Shard of the Deceiver to be in that list. It isn't. So you would assume that the Deceiver has lost the Deep Strike ability. So that's another reason why the Deceiver is in this list. Now, the Deceiver wasn't the most desired Catan Shard anyway. But he, it was still a good unit. It was still a good Catan Shard to take. But obviously the Void Dragon and the Nightbringer were just better. But I think it will be worse than it was. Next on the list, we've got the Canoptic Spiders. Now, another one, another unit that I quite liked, although they were quite expensive once you, once you start kitting them out with the Particle Beamers and the Gloom Prism. It got quite pricey, then you need a Technomancer with a Control Node, and then you need Scarabs to you know, bring them back. It got quite a, a bit of a pricey combination, and they are monsters. A lot of people forget these things are monsters, and they can, again, be shot into engagement range now by other units that are not in engagement range of these monsters. So again, they're going to be less resilient than they previously were. Now, I would I would expect their toughness to go up slightly because they are monsters, but we don't know. We don't really know. They might not get that massive bump like some of the vehicles have got. But yeah, they can be targeted now. They're not going to be hiding in engagement range anymore. So I think they're going to be Still a pretty good unit, still maybe B, again I'm just guessing here obviously, but still going to be that sort of level, but no further than that as a prediction. The next one is the Void Dragon, I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit here with the Catan Shards, I know, I have tried to split them up as you probably can tell. The Void Dragon, that's another monster, it's going to get shot into engagement range, even though it's in engagement range rather, so you, obviously you can shoot into engagement range with monsters and vehicles, but even though units are not in engagement range, they will fire at it. We don't know enough about the Catan powers, and uh, yeah, I've just put him in this list because he's a monster, really. And very similarly with this one, the Transcendent Catan Shard. Now, the Catan Shard had the option of customization in 9th edition, and it did have the Deep Strike as an option. He's not listed again in the Games Workshop Deep Strike section, but you can kind of say maybe he can still get deep strike because it's like an added option so there is a possibility but the fact that the deceiver isn't there you would think that maybe this thing isn't going to get there at all it's not going to get the deep strike option anymore again it's a monster it's not going to be as tough or as frightening as the other ones anyway maybe this one becomes our best one don't know don't know 
Now I wanted to add one more to the list, but I've, I've kind of pulled it from the list. I wasn't sure. It's Illuminas Ares. I'm not putting all the pictures up now because I'm, I'm, I've got my seven. But Illuminas Ares, I want you guys to let me know in the comments because I only saw this before filming this, in fact. When I was on the Games Workshop website, I clicked on character and I wrote down all the characters. There's 19 characters. I, take, I took away the Catan shards because that's not what I'm looking for here and I took away a few other things. And then I went back and clicked Leader and kind of just cross-referenced what's missing from, from the, the character list. And one that, well there was two in fact, there was the Command Barge that was missing, but it's a, it's a vehicle so you kind of wouldn't expect him to have the Leader, the leader keyword is a vehicle. And the other one was Illuminus Ares. Now Illuminus Ares is an infantry character, but it doesn't have the Leader keyword according to the Games Workshop website. So there's only two options here. Either A, he can't go into units, but, well, there's only one option really. He's very likely going to be a lone operative. So that's a good thing and it's also a bad thing because he's not going to get that bodyguard protection like you would with an overlord in a unit of 20 Necron warriors. You've got to choose through the warriors before you get to the overlord unless you've got the precision ability. Whereas Illuminus Ares, okay, you need to be within 12 inches to fire at him. But if he's not streamed off correctly, he can just be charged and killed instantly. And if you are within 12 inches, just shot at without anything, you know, any bodyguards and whatnot. Because there's not going to be a lookout server ability in this edition. So I was um and ah about whether to put him in there or not. I've decided not to, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. But yeah, that is my 7 plus 1, if you like, of my units that I think aren't going to be as good in 10th edition. Let me know yours or let me know some of yours. Do you agree with my list or not? But yeah, guys, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.